Hello there, I'm just following on from the last podcast there when I was telling you a little bit about human movement. I was explaining how we learn, um, how our movement develops. We have this uh, normal movement development pattern that we all go through. And if you look in any book to do with um, children's development, babies' development, you will find there are charts and there are patterns within that book that tell you at approximately what stage or age a baby will be doing something like crawling or standing. However, in life, it isn't necessarily um, what we do, but how we do it. Now, when I am watching somebody walking down the road, as a physiotherapist, as somebody who's always specialised in movement pattern work, one of the things that happens is that I'm always having a look to see how it is that they're moving. I'm curious to see if they're using their hips, if they're using their knees, if they're swinging their legs through in a very stiff manner, if they're rotating their pelvis. Because if you were to look at a whole group of people and give them one similar functional activity to do, let's say it's picking up this weight. Okay, let's suppose I put this on a table and I asked 20 people to come in and pick this weight up and put it down. And they were standing up and I asked them to do it. What would happen is almost certainly they would all do it slightly differently. They would all choose to do the movement slightly differently. And that's because we all have preferred ways of doing things. The way we eat, if you watch somebody pick up a spoon, the way that they use that spoon will be slightly different. Everybody does things very slightly differently. And that's because as we explore how to move and use ourselves, we do it by ourselves. We don't necessarily go back and revisit something like movement. Um, we don't go back and discover again how to roll over. But when someone comes to see me, for example, with a bad back, let's, let's talk about somebody with a bad back. Let's say it's someone um, who rolled over, got out of bed, um, went into the bathroom, I don't know, had a shower, slipped on a bit of soap, and strained a muscle in their back, and uh, now they've got a back strain, their muscle's hurting, and they're in pain. And they come to see me, and they can't fathom out how to roll over in bed easily without actually initiating their pain. So sometimes when I watch them moving, what I notice is that they've completely forgotten the simple idea of doing something like, you know, bending their leg up and pushing on their leg. They can't fathom out that if they bent their knees up and they pushed on their legs to lift, that what would happen is instead of dragging themselves across in the bed with their arms, they would move over much more easily. So sometimes when we go to do things, it's a really good idea to think about how it is that we do things. So how do we sit? You know, how do you sit in your chair? You know, how do you sit? You probably know how you should sit. You probably know because you've probably got, if you work at a computer screen, you've probably had somebody who's come around and said to you, you know, here's your computer, here's your desk, you should have the computer in front of you, you should have your keyboard here. But when I used to work in industry, I used to go out, and I still do, I go into occupational health, I go into offices, and when I go out, I look at people sitting at their desks, and you can tell people have got their uh, keyboard slightly set over to one side. Why? Well, because it's convenient, because when I want to put my work there, it won't fit, and so I have to put this here. Um, they'll move their desk over to one side, and they'll put their their screen over to here just a little bit. Why? Well, because then that means they can chat to their friend more easily to the other side. So a lot of times we know what it is we should do, but we don't bother to find out what it is we do do. And what I would say to you is the first stage in beginning to actually start to make any form of change is to develop a sense of awareness, non-judgmental sense of awareness. So I don't want you to be sitting down thinking, oh, I know how I should sit, I've got my feet on the floor, I'm not sitting up properly. If you're sitting watching your laptop at the moment, just notice how you're sitting. Just notice how you're sitting on the chair. 
Just notice if your weight is, you know, resting back. Notice if you're leaning, you know, are you leaning to one side on the desk? Are you, what are you doing? You know, just notice what you're doing. Because the chances are, most times, when you sit at this particular laptop, computer, whatever it is you're using now, the chances are that you probably sit a little bit like this, a little bit like this habit. And if you want to change the patterns of movement that you've had, as I've already said, the first place to start is to get to know your habits. But the work that I use, which is based on uh, the principles of the Feldenkrais method, one of the things that we do is that we enable people to have a bit of a better understanding. We start off when we're teaching lessons, Feldenkrais lessons, we start off by putting what I call a bookmark at the beginning. And that means that you get to know what it is that you're doing right at the beginning. Then we introduce processes which will initiate your system to have a better understanding of the patterns and habits that either it's forgotten or has never learned. Because if you remember back to what I said before, sometimes if you've got a young baby, it may be a child misses out on, say for example, crawling. There are quite a number of children who miss out on that developmental stage of crawling. Or it might be that they miss out on the stage of lying on their front and pushing up on their arms. It, it can be that there are a whole load of movement sequences that, that some people just never learn. So sometimes in some of the Feldenkrais lessons, um, we actually do teach uh, series and sequences of movement that people have never learned in the past. So when we go through, we put this bookmark in at the beginning, then we go through and we teach our sequences of movement in novel ways, and then right at the end, we do our repeat movement. And what happens is that the person tries something at the beginning, and they find it to be a real challenge, it's a real difficulty, they go through, they get to the end, they try the thing again, and guess what? They find they can do it easily. And that's a motivator. If you find you can do something really easily without actually having to put in an enormous amount of effort, well then what happens is that you want to try and do it again. And the great thing about habits is that actually habits are not that difficult to break. Habits are not that difficult to break. If you're really, really, really motivated to want to change something, you can do it really easily. As well as being a physiotherapist and a Feldenkrais practitioner, I'm also a hypnotherapist. <laughs> when I'm working with people, the people who I have most success with are those people who want to change. It's very easy if somebody wants to give up, say, I don't know, eating chocolate buns or something. If they want to give up eating chocolate buns and they really want to give up eating chocolate buns because they know it's making them lose weight or, I don't know, some reason they want to give up chocolate buns. If they're really motivated, when I work with them with hypnosis, it's just like the tipping point. And it's no different. If somebody knows that the way that they stand, the way that they move, the way that they run, is causing them to have a complex overuse syndrome, a problem, say, with shin splints, or iliotibial band, or quadriceps, or a tracking patella that's causing them to have pain, if they know that if they change, they're going to be motivated to get rid of their pain, they can really quickly learn how to change. So, the great thing about habits is that you're not stuck with your habits. You can learn quite quickly and easily how to change them. And what I'd like to do next time is tell you a little bit more about habits and also perhaps introduce you to a couple of ways that you can think of doing things slightly differently that might make you realize changing your habits are quite easy. So, think about how you're sitting, get to know how you sit, make your habits your best friends, and I look forward to speaking to you again very soon.